here. Uh, but uh, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us uh, today in this uh, important uh, webinar on the future of democracy in Tunisia. It is our uh, great pleasure to welcome uh, Dr. Professor and former President of Tunisia, uh, Dr. Munsaf Manzouki. Uh, he really needs no introduction, but uh, uh, I have to say that he um, uh, is a currently a senior fellow with the Democracy in Hard Places Initiative at the Ash Center for Democratic Governance and Innovation at Harvard University. He, of course, served as the first democratically elected president of Tunisia uh, from uh, the end of 2011 until uh, end of 2014. So for three years, he was president of Tunisia. He is a doctor of medicine. He's a human rights activist and author of numerous books on political philosophy in the Arab world. Uh, Dr. Professor Marzi is Tunisia's uh, first president uh, in the first fair and transparent elections. Um, upon, uh, you know, he, is, he has a long history of uh, struggling for human rights and democracy in Tunisia uh, since the 70s. Uh, he was the founder of the center-left Congress Party for the Republic, uh, which was one of the parties that formed the governmental coalition from November 11, uh, 2011 till February 2014. In 2015, Dr. Marzouki founded the Movement for Popular Citizenship, Harak al-Shaab, uh, Shaab al-Muatineen, a civil movement seeking to encourage active citizen participation among all Tunisians, particularly those marginalized under the previous regimes. More recently, in uh, December 2021, Dr. Professor and former President Marzouki was sentenced to four years in prison in absentia and found guilty of undermining the security of the state from abroad uh, for having uh, and of having caused diplomatic harm uh, because of his criticism of the coup uh, in, in Tunisia. Marzouki rejected the ruling, describing it as, a, as illegal, saying it was issued by an illegitimate president who overturned the constitution. So it gives me great pleasure uh, to welcome uh, Dr. Marzouki uh, today. Uh, the, he will speak for about 20 to 25 minutes, and then we will have about 40 minutes for Q&A. Uh, this meeting and this webinar is on the record, so feel free to quote um, uh, anything that uh, uh, former President Marzouki uh, uh, says today. Uh, we have a, a large number of Tunisia experts and followers of Tunisia who are with us today. Um, more than 140 have registered, but so far we have 50 people who have joined uh, this webinar. So during the Q&A session, uh, you can join the debate and the question and answer period in three ways, either by using the chat function and asking in the uh, uh, question in chat, or by raising your hand, and in that case, we will try to give you the microphone uh, and you can speak for up to two minutes, uh, either to make a comment or, or uh, ask a question. And also you can uh, use the Q&A function, uh, which sends the question directly to the, uh, to the panelists uh, and the moderator. Uh, so uh, again, it's a pleasure to welcome uh, all of you uh, this morning to this important, uh, very important uh, webinar. Uh, as you all know, um, you know, the situation in Tunisia continues to, to deteriorate uh, rapidly, both politically and economically, uh, as well as socially, of course. And uh, President um, uh, you know, Saeed continues to undermine all the democratic rules, all the institutions that have been established uh, after the revolution. And uh, lately, just last week, uh, he uh, declared that he wants to change the uh, electoral code. Uh, that he himself wrote about a month ago. Uh, so he can write the law anytime he wants without any consultation, and he can change the law any way he wants without any consultation. I mean, this is really unprecedented uh, in the history of Tunisia, and I think in the history of any country, uh, that you have a president uh, writing the law by himself, the electoral law, which is such an important law. 
He is basically banning all political parties from participating in this uh, election or so-called election. As we all know, it will be a fake election because he has also appointed the uh, electoral uh, uh, commission that will oversee this uh, this ele so-called election. And the number of observer observers, as we saw during the uh, the uh, uh, referendum in July, was very limited. Only about 1,000 observers when you have 12,000 polling stations. So even if the observers do a fantastic job, they can only oversee and observe less than 10% of the polling stations, which means that 90% of the polling stations remain without any, any observation and any um, independent, let's say, control uh, over the procedures of the election and the counting and so on. So the, uh, the situation is very alarming, and we are very happy today to have uh, a professor and former president Marzouki. Uh, and we have asked him today really to tell us how he thinks a democracy can be restored. What are the steps that uh, Tunisians, Tunisians and Tunisian Democrats need to take to restore democracy um, in Tunisia? So thank you, uh, uh, Professor, former president Marzouki, for uh, joining us. Uh, the floor is yours. Well, first of all, I would like to welcome all the, all of you and to thank Dr. Radwan Masmoudi and the Center for Study of Islam Democracy for this opportunity to talk about uh, the situation in Tunisia. Uh, as uh, Dr. Radwan Masmoudi said, uh, Tunisia is facing a, a real, uh, very, very bad situation. I, uh, there are, in fact, there are two questions about Tunisia today. The first question is, where, where, where are we heading? You know, if the, the current situation would continue, what would be the, the, the output? And the, the answer is very easy. Uh, we are heading uh, toward a real disaster. And the second question, of course, is uh, what to do to prevent Tunisia, you know, to, uh, uh, to face uh, this disaster. Uh, it's very difficult, you know, to uh, to say what's going to happen in the let's say in the next few months because politicians are just like meteorologists, you know, they cannot foresee long term, but uh, they they can give some prediction uh, about the near future. And unfortunately, when we when we uh, analyze the political and the economic situation in Tunisia, you can be sure that we are heading to a, a real disaster, a real catastrophe. Why? Because Tunisia is facing three major crises at the same time. And these crises are deeply, uh, uh, deeply linked and they are getting worse day by day. First, the we have to understand first, before giving the treatment, as, uh, as a doctor, I have always to be sure that the diagnosis is sure. So I have to, to, to say in words about the diagnosis, about the, the, three, um, the, the three major crises. The political crisis is mainly due to the fact that we have, I, I, I have always said that, that we have uh, 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 a man who is not fit for the job. Uh, a man which I have always say as a doctor that he has real uh, serious mental health problems. And I am extremely shocked by the fact that the people are not, uh, uh, they don't understand the fact. They are just like people, you know, uh, looking at the sun uh, uh, at noon uh, uh, in a summer day and refusing to say that this is a sun. Because this is the problem. The problem is that we have a president that never talked to the opposition, never talked to anybody, never listened to anybody. Uh, uh, he is just in his own world. He, he said himself that he's from another world. And I do believe that he's from another world. He's uh, really deeply engulfed in, in his uh, thoughts about uh, uh, sort of like a messiah, you know, he's uh, uh, seeing himself as somebody who has solved all the Tunisian problem with a, a new constitution, a new, so, a new society, a new economy, etc. And this is what's completely, I would say, this is com and this is exactly what what have destroyed Libya because Libya have had this this kind of uh, leadership, and you know what happened to Libya. Libya has been completely destroyed because Gaddafi 
also thought that he is going you know, to change the world, that he has new thought that have never been, uh, 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 that never existed before, etc., etc. So we have a president that clearly is unfit for the, for the job, uh, uh, talking to nobody. Uh, I, I can assure you that during my presidency, and even the, the, during the presidency of uh, the, the President Bajakai Sipsi, it was very, uh, very common that the president is talking to the opposition all the time. I used to talk to the opposition all the time. Every Friday, I used to have the, the, the leader of the, the opposition around the, around the lunch or a dinner, and we used to talk, and a lot of problems have been solved because because of this way of dealing of the political problem in in in, in a country, a small country like us, like ours, where everybody should talk to everybody. So this the, this man is never talking to any uh, to anybody, and uh, he is uh, he is, he continues to pursue his chimerical projects of a new social and political order in the only understand. But the most important thing is his really totally cut off of the, 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 the main concern of Tunisian. Oh, today, Tunisian, I can assure you, today, this morning, Tunisian, no, are uh, running after gas, running after some uh, uh, food stuff like sugar, like milk, et cetera, et cetera. And this, what's the main problem for this man? Is the new election of, uh, uh, of a parliament. Everybody knows that th this parliament would have n n no power at all. And, uh, Tunisians are totally disinterested, that have no interest in this uh, election, but the, the, our president is only interested in things that doesn't, do not interest any Tunisian. So this, this is part of the political crisis, but the political crisis has also another side. It's the opposition. The opposition is weak, and the opposition uh, is, uh, um, has no credibility, uh, mainly because this divided between People working with Islamists, people against Islamists. As, as the main problem of Tunisia now is, are you with another or are you uh, against another? The problem should be, are you with the coup or, or are you against the coup? But because of the, the divide and the weakness of the 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 the, uh, the opposition, I am afraid that um, the Tunisian people doesn't doesn't see an alternative. You know, when you want to change things, you have to have an alternative. If you don't have an alternative, you, you, you can just say, okay, uh, let's wait. And it's the political crisis is not only the crisis of the system. It's only the crisis. It's also the crisis of the uh, uh, of the opposition. Uh, and now the, the problem is that in spite of this situation, the population itself engulf it and uh, the difficulties of daily life doesn't seem to be ready you know to a new revolution maybe because they are afraid of chaos maybe people are afraid of you know uh, having uh, once again the same people the government etc but now the, the political crisis is that to have the weakness of the the, the 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 power the weakness of the opposition and the weakness of the population which is not taking to the street for the moment, or sometimes from time to time, and not very efficiently. So in such, uh, uh, in such <clears throat> situation, history sh shows that the society goes through a phase of implosion, where social bonds deteriorate and where you have anger and frustration uh, uh, in hearts and mind. And then after this period of implosion, you will have always explosion. This is what's going to happen. Tunisia is like a volcano, you know, the, the pressure is going on, on and on and on, and then you will have the explosion. And this explosion could be a very violent explosion, and we could um, unfortunately have to face a new new chapter of, his, uh, of Tunisian history that we have always tried to avoid, which means change by, by force and by violence. The problem also that this... Uh, Political crisis is deeply linked with the economic crisis. Of course, we suffer with Tunisia because of the war in Ukraine. Of course, with their own external factors. But the fact, the most important fact, is Tunisia is suffering from, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a poor and uh, deteriorating economy. And this since the revolution, because the main problem of the, the economy of Tunisia is that. We have we have had uh, uh, from the revolution up to now a kind uh, a, a continuous 
Uh, political instability. Uh, imagine that uh, under my presidency, there were three governments. Under the presidency of Bejef is three other governments. And now we have also three other governments, which means that we have had nine governments in, in, uh, in, in uh, 11 years, which means that every government would last just one year. No government can tackle the, the real problem, the structural problem of the economy or, or any uh, social problem other social problems when it can last just one, one year. And the economy suffers political instability. And this man, this president, this Putin's president has increased the political instability because for the moment, nobody knows exactly what would happen. And of course, in those circumstances, foreign investors or even internal, international investors will say, no, I'm not, uh, it's the, polit the, the situation is too unstable, let's wait. And this is why uh, the economy is at, at standstill, and the, this is why the economy is getting um, the, sit the economic situation is getting uh, worse and worse every day. Then came, of course, the, the crisis of Ukraine, which uh, aggravates the, the, the situation. Just a word about the politic, the the, um, the social and uh, uh, psychological crisis, which not addressed by many people. People would talk only about political crisis or economic crisis. For me, the most important crisis is the, the psychological crisis and the moral crisis. Tunisians are all today depressed. They, they, they don't see the, uh, uh, they don't have any hope. They believe that the worst, that, that the worst is, is, is to come. And a lot of Tunisians now are fleeing the country by illegal or illegal means. And it's heartbreaking to see our youth, you know, <clears throat> leaving the country. Uh, by all means, because they don't believe that Tunisia is no longer uh, a country that can, where can they live and where can they raise their children, etc. So this is why I, I do believe that we are going to heading to a disaster. If if here we have to to do something to avoid the disaster. Now the question uh, is, what should be done, and then how we can achieve the objective. What should, what should be done is for, for me clear. It's you know it's the end of the the coup. It's the end of the dictatorship. If that this guy, this uh, Putin's president, must be removed, because believing that we can have a kind of dialogue with this man for uh, a political reform or political transition is completely uh, forget about it. Uh, the, 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 because of his poor mental health. Mm -hmm, Status. This man would never discuss anything to, and to discuss with him about what what kind of uh, discussion sh should we have? What kind of dialogue do you think that this guy would would accept? You know, to come back to the situation before uh, the coup. Of course, he always said that no way to come back to the uh, former situation. While we do know that the only way uh, to solve the political problem is to come back to the before uh, the coup of uh, uh, 2021. So um, it's the responsibility of everybody, you know, to remove this man from office because this is only the only way, you know, to get to to be able to solve the political problem. Uh, what I'm trying to say that it's the responsibility of everybody, you know, to 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 put an end to the coup and to restore the democracy and to come back to the situation before 2021, even if it was not a very good situation, but it's it was much better than what we are uh, living today. So we have the responsibility. We have three levels of responsibility, you know, to achieve this objective. The first level is it's the responsibility of Tunisians themselves. It's the, the responsibility mainly of the, the youth, you know, to understand that. No future, you know, can be uh, uh, hoped or achieved if they don't move, if they don't take to the street, if they don't do what the Algerian youth did. And here we have an example of the Algerian, you know, during the Harak, the Hirak of uh, 2019. Remember, the Algerian people took to the street 52 weeks. Uh, uh, and this was something extraordinary for me because at that time, everybody was saying, uh, the Arab Spring is over. And I said, no, no, the Arab, the Arab Spring is just at the beginning of the beginning. Look what happened in Algeria. The Algerian good as the good example of the people, the whole people taking into the street to get rid of uh, a sick and incapable uh, 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 president. 
which is the case exactly of Taisaid. He's sick and he's incapable of to reach, uh, 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 to lead the, the country. Of course, people would say, hey, but uh, of course, uh, I, uh, uh, the, the former the Algerian president, uh, Bouteflika, uh, gone. In fact, he was replaced by uh, uh, another man from the, from the same system. Okay, that's true. But even, you know, if we can replace this man by another man from the, the system, it will be much better because we will have somebody who probably sane and then can uh, we, uh, with him, we can talk and we can uh, achieve a kind of agreement or a kind of consensus, which is totally impossible now with this man. So the first level of responsibility is the responsibility of, of the youth of the people. And the opposition has called for uh, a demonstration, in the, I think, uh, next Saturday, uh, the, the, the 15th. And I called all the Tunisian news you know, to, take, to, to, to take to the street and uh, to begin what I call uh, a, a democratic and peaceful resistance to the coup. We have to do, it. it's not a matter of just, you know, go to the demonstration one, once every three months, like, like the, the, actually the, the, the situation. It's to go to the, to take to the street every week until the coup is ended. This is the only way to do it. It's the, the way that the Algerian uh, uh, shows it, and I think it was the best thing. Now, the second level of the responsibility is, the, uh, uh, I would say, the level of the state official. I do believe that people in the, within the state, I'm not talking about the deep state, I'm talking about the official in the, the state, the Tunisian state, they understand, they do know that this man is a, a, the most destructive forces against the Tunisian state. He's destroying the Tunisian state. He has destroyed the, uh, the constitution. He has destroyed all the, uh, the, 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 the independent uh, bodies like, uh, you know, the, uh, all the independent commission for justice, independent commission against corruption, independent commission for uh, uh, the judiciary, etc. This guy has destroyed all the, the, the structure of democratic society. And now he is destroying the, the, the the, the parliament that he is trying, you know, to set up is, is of course, it's a parody of parliament. Uh, this this man is destroying the state, and it is the responsibility of all the Tunisian, the officials Tunisian, to defend the state, because without the state, with with a corrupt and destroyed the state, it will be the chaos in our country. We have to defend the state, and this is why I I, I ask the military, you know. Uh, the, the military to solve the problem because if they don't solve the problem now, they could be, I, I say, they it could be uh, uh, in very soon in a situation where probably they would have to, uh, to, uh, to confront the population. And I know that our army has never confronted the population. So if we don't, if the, 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 uh, the, uh, the military and the, not only the military, but all the, the, the structure of the state do not want Tunisia to, to, uh, to, be, to, to face a, a new chaos or new outburst of violence, there is no way it, this man must be removed as soon as possible. And once again, I am not asking for a military coup because what I, what I say is that this man has to be removed, and immediately we have to go back to the to the people with uh, uh, with free elections under the, the the constitution of 2014, of course. So Tunisia could, as soon as possible, you know, restore the state, have a, a, a healthy man at the, at the head of the state, stop this, you know, this uh, this fantasy, this the. Yes, something incredible, you know, to what's happening in Tunisia today. So this is the responsibility of the military, it's the responsibility of the, the, the police, it's the responsibility of the judiciary, it's the responsibility of the administration, it's the responsibility of all the state officials, because once again, we have to defend the state because the state is in danger and the state is attacked by this man who has sworn to destroy the, our state. And if our state is destroyed, we will face the situation in Lebanon, and then the Tunisia would would face really dire, dire uh, situation. So, the first level of responsibility is the responsibility <clears throat> of the, the the youth to take to the street, the responsibility of the uh, state official, and the responsibility, of course, to the opposition. 
the opposition must unite, must must give to the to the to, to the country a new uh, uh, a new alternative. They must stop this divide between pro-Islamist and or, uh, against Islamists. The, the divide in Tunisia has been and it remains between those for the democracy and those against democracy. Those for the coup and those against the coup. This is the real divide. All other divide is artificial and it's uh, it's way to, 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 to lose our time, it's our, to lose our effort, etc. Now I'll uh, finish by the third level, the responsibility of our friends of uh, uh, and all the international donors. So um, uh, it, it, it happens that I'm now here in the United States, in Boston, and uh, uh, I have to uh, to answer the question uh, to ask to say what to say some words about the position of the uh, the, the government of the United States to the world group. I deeply regret. I deeply regret that the, the Biden administration didn't recognize the coup as a coup because it is a coup, and I know they don't want to recognize the coup as a coup probably because. Let's say because uh, uh, under the, uh, the American law, they would have to cut any, uh, any kind of, uh, uh, you know, of help to the Tunisian government, etc. But it is a coup. It is a coup. And the, uh, fortunately, the, uh, the African Court of Human Rights uh, has recognized the coup as a coup. And I do believe that it's up to the, our friends, democratic states, accept that Tunisia is now victim of a coup and that we are going back to the dictatorship. And here, I, it happened that uh, sometimes I say, look, uh, the United States or the Western countries, they have always, always uh, supported our dictatorship, mainly in the, in the Middle East. And now look what's happening. Look at what's happening. Uh, uh, the, the, the Emirati regime, the Saudi regime, the Egyptian regime. Now they are supporting during this war. They are supporting Russia, and they are spreading the. They are fighting for the the, 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 the Chinese and the Russian models. So I don't understand. Really, I don't understand what uh, uh, okay the United States or Western country. You know, because they because of this fear of instability. You know, they would support countries supporting, you know, the most important danger for me for the West, which is the Chinese model, the spreading of the Chinese model and the Russian model in the Arab world and the, in Africa. So, um, but don't misunderstand me. I'm not uh, asking for any kind of intervention because uh, once again, I know that a, a democracy cannot be imported. Democracy cannot be exported. Democracy is an internal matter of the society. If we don't reach by our self-democracy, it, 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 uh, forget about it. Look at what happened in Iraq. It was a real catastrophe. I'm not asking for the intervention of the Americans or, or the European in our internal affairs. It's our duty. It's our job you know, to, uh, to move and to, to establish a real democracy in our country. But it's the, it's the duty of our friends you know, to, to, to help us only by not supporting the dictatorship. That's all what we are asking for. Now, the, the, I will end with, uh, <clears throat> with uh, the last uh, question, which is uh, uh, the international donors, the role of international donors, especially the International Monetary Fund. You know that uh, it's in final stage of negotiation a loan of $4 million to the Tunisian regime. Of course, I uh, uh, I want this money, you know, to go to to, to Tunisia, uh, because I, I hope and I believe that it could it could it could uh, alleviate the suffering of the elderly Tunisian. Uh, this is why I, I totally support this uh, this loan, just because I I hope I believe that it can be useful for that small part of the Tunisian uh, uh, population, but. It's also important to know that this money, this money will be used to prolong the agony of the regime. It will help the, this regime, you know, which is once again the threat against our democracy, a threat against our economic development. It will help him to survive, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, 
one year, two years, I don't know, but it will help him to survive. So the, 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 the situation is extremely difficult because on one hand, you, we, have, we, we have to support this loan because it will help some part of the money would have part of the Tunisian people. And I am interested in alleviating the suffering of my fellow citizens. But at the same time, I know that unfortunately this money would uh, lead to, uh, 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 yeah, to help the, the, the bureaucracy of the dictatorship to thrive. So um, this is why I, I say if condition, if condition must uh, to be put on this loan, it's mainly about being sure that the money will go to the, uh, will uh, uh, help to create jobs or will help to, uh, you know, to go to the, 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 the poorest part of the population and not to the, the bureaucracy. Because um, I don't believe that uh, this guy would accept any political condition. I, I'm sure that he would accept the to, reason to, to starve uh, instead of uh, changing his, his policy. So the only condition that should be put is where this money is going, to be sure that this money is not going to, to you know, to, to the bureaucracy of the dictatorship, but to the needy people. So uh, I'm going to end because uh, time is running out. So, well, despite all this difficulty, despite all this problem, I do believe that uh, Tunisian can get uh, uh, out of this very difficult situation. Uh, I, rem I remember that uh, in December 2011, we were all desperate. We were all saying that Tunisia is, uh, is lost forever. And then we have had the, the, the Arab Spring. We have had this three years of hope of uh, building uh, a new society, a new uh, a new democratic state. Unfortunately, we have had the, the competition and have hold the this historical accident. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, I, I still believe that we get to, I still believe that we have more work and can be, uh, can be, uh, uh, can realize a future for Tunisia. So, in uh, fact, what to expect? Life has taught me. Surprise very soon. I don't know what kind of surprises to be, you know, we have to. Uh, to good and uh, bad and good surprises while working, of course, to ensure the good surprises outwit the bad surprises. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Marzouki and, and uh, President Marzouki for uh, your excellent uh, remarks. Uh, we have about 40 minutes for Q&A. Uh, so again, you can ask with the Q&A section or in the chat section, like to speak and you can see you on video. Uh, Dr. You mentioned that we need to go back to the 2014 uh, constitution. And of course, I agree with you. That is the only solution uh, uh, is to go back to the 2014 pre-coup uh, constitution. But there are a number of Tunisians today who have been uh, convinced by the media in Tunisia that the constitution of 2014 uh, did not provide an efficient government, did not provide an efficient um, uh, system that can solve the needs, whether they are economic or political or social uh, needs of the, of the Tunisians. And so um, how can we go back to the 2014 uh, constitution and uh, without, without uh, you know, going back to the same problems and the same, uh, let's say, dead end or, or, or sometimes stalemate uh, uh, constitution that we had or stalemate uh, parliament that we have. How can we reform the 2014 constitution 
while at the same time moving forward with the democratic process. Uh, do you have some suggestions? I'm sure this question is on the minds of a lot of, of uh, Tunisians. Of course, but I can assure you that Tunisians uh, were victim of uh, uh, silly and uh, dishonest propaganda. Uh, because if we have had problems, it's not because of the constitution. It, it is mainly because of the electoral code. This was the main problem because uh, uh, the electoral code is made in such a way that you will have a, a patchwork uh, in the parliament uh, and that you cannot have a majority. And this political uh, code has been set just, you know, to prevent another to be uh, to have a majority. And I have always said, you know, I am not pro nada. I am a secularist, and have always said, look, we need majority to govern this country. If the majority is another majority, why not? If the, this Nada would succeed, it would be good for the country. But if Nada doesn't succeed, then uh, we will have a new election and then we will have another majority so we can solve the problem of the country. But because, you know, people, you know, people who have set the electoral code in 2011 have just one objective, you know, to, uh, uh, to prevent another to have the majority. Now we are the victim of this uh, political, uh, uh, the, the, uh, this electoral code, because we couldn't have a stable government because of this uh, damned electoral law. All we had to change is the electoral law so we can have a majority. I don't mind whether this majority is Islamist or, or secularist. I don't mind. I, I want this majority to, to stick to the, the, uh, by the rule of democracy, and that, that would be okay. Now, people, you know, I, I remember that, okay, well, yes, uh, power is not in one hand, etc. Now you have the power in one hand. Now you have the, now you can see, now you can, you can compare what's to live under a system where we have check and balance, where, uh, uh, you know, powers are, uh, uh, are well described and and now you have the, 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 this man who has all, all, all the power. Have you seen any uh, any important change in your uh, in your condition? Of course not. So now it will be. Uh, I think uh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, fortunately, we have had this uh, this counter revolution because people would compare between you know what's to live under the rule of law, the rule of a real constitution, and the rule of one man. Uh, and with the constitution, where he took all the powers, people uh, are seeing the differences. Also, my, I have a second question or follow up to your to your speech. Um, you mentioned uh, about the uh, IMF loan or the possibility of an IMF loan that there must be political conditions attached uh, to the loan. What kind of political conditions would you like uh, to see uh, attached uh, to the loan? No, I said that um, political condition would be, uh, let's say, uh, uh, Restore the, 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 the uh, restore the uh, the constitution of 2014. Of course, this man will never accept. I don't believe that there there will be political condition, but economic condition saying uh, we are okay. We are giving this money, but we want to be sure that this money will go to the needy, to the uh, uh, to create jobs, etc., etc., and not just to function the the, the 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 your your, your system. You know, to stay in power as long as possible. And this is and this is is, is acceptable. I think uh, if the IMF would see that this money would would just be for you know for the functioning of the state and to remain in power, of course it 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 it, it would be silly, you know, to once again to prolong the, the agony of the, the of the system. But shouldn't it be up to the Tunisian uh, institutions, um, um, such as the parliament or, you know, uh, and, and independent judiciary to, to monitor uh, the, the budget of the state and how the money is being spent? Should of it course. be, uh, yeah. Of course, but the problem is that we don't have any parliament, we don't have, we don't have any uh, independent uh, uh, structure, etc. So, uh, um, you, you cannot ask uh, for things that do not exist. Okay. We uh, have a question from uh, former Ambassador Herman Cohen. Um, actually, two questions. Uh, the first question from Ambassador Cohen is, does the regime show signs of corruption? <clears throat> I, uh, uh, well, the, the, the problem of corruption is extremely complex in Tunisia. 
uh, you have corruption everywhere that uh, and we i can say that we failed we failed tackling this problem because we have short in you know, three years you cannot tackle such a problem but for the moment uh, uh, I think the the, the 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 whole system is is corrupt, and this uh, president is talking all the time about fighting corruption, but he, he did nothing. Under my presidency, uh, we, we we have seized more than three hundred companies. Three hundred companies. We 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 succeeded, you know, to, to have some money back from uh, 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 stolen money from Tunisia. We could have back have it back in, in Tunisia. But uh, now when you compare what has been done during my presidency and what is done now for the moment, you see the difference. It's, it's just talking, talking all the time about corruption, but nothing is, uh, is changing. Now, what about corruption of the people within the new regime of Qais Saeed and the people around Qais Saeed themselves. There are rumors that they themselves are uh, involved in corruption. There, yes, there are rumors, but I'm not going to take about rumors. I have been victim of rumors myself. I wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't comment, but I know that the, the, this man has no, uh, no intention, probably, and no, no possibility to tackle the problem. Okay, second question from uh, uh, former Ambassador Herman Cohen. Is it accurate to say that the Ennahda regime was more interested in promoting religious law than in modern governance? No, 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 at all. I can assure you, you know, uh, I have a lot of problems with Ennahda, but can I can assure you that uh, uh, never Ennahda tried, you know, to impose any religious law. I can assure you that we have had a lot of discussion before the constitution was drawn about the word Sharia. And uh, uh, I remember that the Sheikh Rashid al uh, wanted to, to, the word Sharia to be in the constitution, and I convinced him that it would be unacceptable for the secular uh, part of the population, and he accepted. He accepted. So uh, it's not true to say that another had tried anything in order to impose uh, any kind of Sharia or any kind of religious law. Okay. Um, we have a, a question from uh, William Lawrence, um, Professor William Ra Lawrence. Uh, how can the military and the bureaucracy force uh, Qais Saeed out? Uh, and the most important precondition is a long Herat, uh, like a street protests, but uh, that this has not happened yet. Yes, it has now happened because, first, because of the COVID situation, and also because the summer, the summer, this this summer was extremely hot in Tunisia. Uh, so there are, and people also was exhausted and very tired, etc. But now, for the moment, I think this there will be uh, uh, something like the Herat, and then I, I guess that the military is just waiting for the population to take the, the street because. I, I know well, very well the military because I have been the, the, the head of the, 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 this military as president. I know them very well. I know they are patriotic, and, uh, and I'm sure that they are not very happy with this this man. So the, when we uh, when we are going to have the Iraq, I think they would force him to to, to resign because this man has no uh, uh, he, he had he used to have uh, uh, a kind of popular support the, the first year, but now he's really is. If, the whole population, even his uh, uh, supporters now are saying that this man is not fit for the for, for the office. So it's obvious for everybody that he, he, he must be removed. And I think that what happened, they are just waiting the people to take the street to remove him. Okay. Um, we have a question from uh, Professor John Kerry. Um, and uh, he has raised his hand, so I'm going to give him, uh, allow him to speak. Uh, Professor Kerry, uh, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. I'm, uh, I want to uh, follow up on your comment uh, about uh, electoral reform. I, I agree with you. Uh, you, made a, you made a point that uh, the electoral law should provide uh, greater rewards for larger parties and larger alliances. Um, and I, I agree, I think uh, the, the electoral code needs to reward uh, coalitions as opposed to fragmentation, but I'm wondering if you can offer any further specifics on how exactly the law should be modified to achieve that goal. Well, this is probably the most important question because now if, we, uh, uh, if this man is removed, 
uh, we cannot we cannot uh, uh, organize a, a new election under the electoral law, the current electoral law. So, in fact, the parliament has has to, uh, to to come back and then to discuss a new electoral law, and th 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 this would be possible. Otherwise, uh, see any kind of uh, uh, any solution. So what you're saying, uh, uh, Dr. Mazuki, is we have to reinstate the uh, the previous uh, parliament, or we have to elect a new parliament? No, according no, no, to, no, no, to... no, no, no. Electing a new parliament will be, you know, the, the, our problem has been that we have taken uh, a lot of time in transitional period. Uh, the transitional period was an error. Uh, economy cannot cannot wait uh, years and years until you reach an agreement, a political agreement. We have to go to the, the, the once again to the to go to the polls and ask the people to choose a new parliament. I don't know. Maybe if we have uh, uh, we can agree with with within this parliament or without this parliament on a new electoral code. Uh, which would able to to give uh, any any party majority, so we can once again have a majority to govern the the, the country. Otherwise, the patchwork now of political party would be would uh, would be a new catastrophe. Okay, uh, we have a question from Ambassador Herman Cohen, former Ambassador Herman Cohen. Go ahead, please. Ambassador Cohen. Uh, you are muted, Ambassador Cohen. Can you um, unmute yourself? Okay, you're still muted. We cannot hear you, Ambassador Cohen. There is a button to unmute yourself, I think, at the bottom of the screen. Okay, it's, it's not working. Maybe we'll come back later to Ambassador Cohen. We have a question from uh, Moaz Zemini. Go ahead, Moaz. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Masmoudi. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Marzouki and uh, President Marzouki, actually, uh, for this time. Um, I agree with your diagnosis 100%. You put your finger right on it. Just you remind me of uh, former governor and Dr. Howard Dean, former governor of Vermont, who is really outspoken and putting things straight into perspective. Now, from what I see, this coup has been going on for too long. And the divide, the polarization in the, among the political parties in Tunisia and the uh, dislike for Nada has created a big divide in the country that they forgot about the coup. They don't want to go back just because they don't like that. Now, okay. how can we bridge? How can we bridge uh, that divide and, and bring back the people, their, change their conscience, change their state of mind? Because no salvation, I think, comes either from God or from the people themselves. We cannot depend on the military or the legitimacy uh, 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 or an outside power, the salvation is from ourselves, Tunisians. We need to take matters on our hands and don't just wait for America or the military or for other countries to come in and step in and, and, and make sacrifices. Democracy does not come cheap. And as long as the people in Tunisia are still sleeping, are not aware of what's, what they're thinking <clears throat> and forgetting about their hate and dislike, ideological hate for another, they're going to stay like that. And that reminds me of uh, Madeleine Albright's statement when they told her, well, the children of Iraq were starving. You've got to take off these embargoes on, on Iraq. She said, let them starve. And that was that was the statement she made. So are we going to do that parallel on Tunisia and let the people starve as long as this dictator and put his remains in power? This is where I'm asking you, sir, how to move the Tunisians to take matters and to go to the palace in Carthage, head straight on and remove them. That's the only solution, don't you think? Thank you. 
what as I told you, the problem is the, um, the opposition is uh, has no credibility because of this divided and because this conflict, this, uh, I would say, uh, structural conflict between um, some kind of secularist. I myself secularist, you, you know that, and uh, uh, and the Nada. And of course, uh, Nada made a lot of mistakes, uh, sure. I'm the first, uh, I have always denounced uh, the, the way that uh, another tackled the problem of the, the, the uh, how to deal with the old political system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But now, for the moment, I always say, look, Tunisia is growing. Tunisia is, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the state is being destroyed. We we are in a very very difficult, tough situation. So please, let's forget about the uh, 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 personal problem or political problem. Just try to work together, you know, to uh, topple this uh, the, this dictator, and then. We can uh, sit and discuss what went wrong during the 10 years and uh, what we uh, must do, you know, to, to, to save Tunisia from the bankruptcy and from this, this disaster we are heading towards. Well, this is what I am t t t telling the different political leaders in Tunisia. I'm all, all the time, you know, in contact with them. I'm Telling that I'm trying, you know, to to make them reach a kind of consensus. I'm not desperate. I think maybe because of the worsening of the situation, people would accept, you know, to sit together and uh, uh, and talk uh, uh, to give the Tunisian people a kind of hope. But look, if they don't, if the political leaders won't be uh, uh, able, you know, to to. Uh, uh, to to, to accept that the situation is too serious to uh, uh, to die, uh, obliging them you know, to sit and to find a consensus. I think we will have a new uh, wave of uh, of uh, probably of birth uh, of uh, new wave of violence, and maybe we will have new leaders that would come and uh, say we are going to tackle the problem. You, the, the old people, stay away. I don't know. As I told you, we. we we must be ready, you know, to accept a lot of surprises. Some, of, some of the surprise good, and some, unfortunately, very bad. Thank you. Uh, we have Mr. Alex Sutton uh, from the uh, uh, IRI, the International Republican Institute uh, office, is the director of the IRI office in Tunisia. Uh, go ahead, Alex, please. Hi. Good afternoon, President Marzuki. It's a real pleasure to. Uh, to join a call where you're speaking. Um, thank you and thanks to Radwan for once again hosting a very timely and important um, group. Um, I guess I have a couple of questions based on your comments. I'll try to move through them super quickly here. One was you mentioned that Tunisia is like a volcano. I, you know, having, I'm, I'm based there, although I'm making this call from Washington. I am struggling to, I, I certainly see the economic crisis. I see, uh, I, I observe um, the dissatisfaction and sort of the disconnectivity of people with what's going on. But um, I think for many observers, it's hard to sort of see how it's like a volcano. So I, I would like maybe, you know, just to hear a little bit more on that. The second is, you know, you talk, um, I think very correctly, and you're not the first on these calls to talk about the need for the political actors to step up. And, you know, we call it the opposition. I define the opposition by those who oppose, right? So it's, they're not all lined up. But in what scenario, if there is any, and how soon do you actually see where the world's, you know, the universes of NADA, PDL, and the UGTT trade union, all sort of, even though they might not be on one platform, on one sort of, you know, one place announcing joint activity, because I don't think that will ever happen, of course. But where do those things begin to overlap so that the pressure is observed almost? you know, singularly. And then I guess the third one is, you, you made a comment about it being obvious to everyone that Kaiside needs to be removed. I would, 
you know, I would push back with all due respect, sir, and say polling doesn't always reflect that. I said, although I question whether, you know, how pop, quote unquote, popular President Said is, I wouldn't necessarily say that there's any research out there that says everyone agrees he needs to be removed. I think that's, I, I haven't seen any data for that. And then finally, just you said that the IMF, a deal could buy him one or two years, which I find extraordinary because, you know, my understanding is that IMF deal is fairly close. So the time for sort of going back and forth with input on the political, you know, necessities for this sort of is over. Uh, my, my, that's my take. If, if you have an alternative kind of assessment, of course, I would love to hear that. But if it is one or two years just by getting a loan, then I, I wonder how we then go back and view all of these other factors if, in fact, that loan is coming. Thanks. Sorry for the long and segmented question, but this is such a great opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Uh, yeah, many questions. Uh, I will try to respond the, uh, the latest uh, about the IMF. Look, w w what I'm afraid of is uh, not only that the the, the loan could uh, prolong the uh, the agony of the the, the system, but uh, it, it, you know, uh, Tunisia is uh, the Tunisian people now is really suffering from. Uh, very, very bad uh, political situation. So the remedy of the IMF, which means the reforms, of course, I, I know that the reforms are necessary. Of course, uh, maybe uh, we have been uh, too late, you know, to undertake this reform. Maybe we, we have been enough courage, you know, to undertake this, uh, this reform uh, uh, on time. But now, uh, uh, you know that um, uh, the result or the fruit of this reform would be a long term. But uh, in the short term, what would happen is that uh, uh, those reform would probably uh, promote more and more suffering for Tunisia. And this, you know, adding suffering to the current suffering may uh, lead to a new explosion. And maybe the loan of the IMF, the condition put by the IMF, Maybe they would really, uh, uh, I would say, worse on the situation, the political situation, the economic situation, something, would, uh, and the volcano would burst. And then I come back to the image of the volcano. I have always said that the Arab Spring is not accurate uh, uh, image. The image is volcano because uh, within a volcano we have uh, uh, necessary ingredient, and this necessary ingredient for the explosion in Tunisia now are all there. You know the political crisis, the economic situation, the despair of population, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You have all the ingredients, and uh, of course, uh, as as geologists, we do not exactly know how uh, the different forces would work. You know, to uh, this is why we, we never can say that this volcano would explode next year at the, at that time. But you do know that the volcano would explode, and I. Can assure you that Tunisian volcano, the Egyptian volcano, probably the Algerian volcano would expose one day or another. And now about um, the, the responsibility, uh, uh, the fact that Kais uh, Said, uh, uh, while polls, etc., maybe he's popular. There are no uh, uh, data saying that he must be removed. The problem is that uh, uh, things are, uh, you know are uh, worsening day after day, and it's obvious for the population uh, that he is not fit for the, for the office, that he is uh, a way of their uh, concern about the, 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 the daily problem. And I can assure that he has lost a lot of support. I know that uh, uh, in 2021, after the coup, he was very popular among, uh, uh, among a large part of the population, but he has lost all support. Even his uh, uh, supporters now are, you know, are leaving him one, one by one because it's obvious for all the population that the, the, this man is not uh, is not once again fit for the office. So let's see the, the let's see the what's what's going to happen. Now about the the divide of the the, the, the responsibility once again of the opposition. I I, I told you that I, I'm really very upset by the fact that. 
uh, the, the all divided between secularists and the Islamists, our pro-Islamists, or people working with Islamists like me are still there. And uh, we have, we don't have any choice, you know, to, uh, to remove this divide. By by what means? By talking, by discussing. There are a lot of discussion going on now in Tunisia. I am behind some of them, and I hope that we will achieve some uh, one day or another some some consensus about the fact. Maybe that the NADA would maybe a little bit uh, be in retreat. So uh, the 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 secularist party, including the secularist party, working with the NADA would reach a kind of consensus. You know, to confront the. The, the the dictatorship but you know things are uh, the process is going on well i cannot i cannot assure you what would happen tomorrow because once again i, I said that we have we have to be very very uh, uh, ready to any kind of surprise thank you um, we have a question from jose ignacio uh, hernandez uh, he's also a fellow at the kennedy school of government uh, where you are uh, President Marzouki. So, um, welcome, Jose. Go ahead, please. Well, um, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, President Marzouki is quite an honor. Uh, Dr. Radwan, uh, again, thank you so much for organizing this conversation. And I want to uh, ask you, uh, President Marzouki, about uh, how can how can we help to change the narrative of the Tunisia crisis? Uh, Tunisia is not an isolated case. Uh, one of the lessons that the 21st century is bringing is that democracies are dying from the inside out, usually covered by constitutional formalities. Uh, and that creates a problem because from the outside per perspective, uh, it is possible to conclude that, that what is happening in Tunisia is a domestic affair protected by the non-intervention principle and therefore the international community has not a word to say regarding the Tunisia situation. But if we are able to look behind this constitutional veil, what is happening in Tunisia, as you properly characterize, is a coup d'etat, is a continuous coup d'etat covered by constitutional formalities, but in essence, an authoritarian measures, uh, measure that uh, is decimating constitutional democracy, and as you say, is going, uh, it's heading to a total disaster, not only in human rights terms, but also in, in economic development uh, terms. So how can we help to change the narrative regarding Tunisia in order to explain that regarding these constitutional formalities, what is happening in Tunisia is a coup d'etat, a gross violation not only of the 2014 constitution, but also the international human rights, as was uh, decided recently by the African Court on, on, on Human Rights. How can we help President Marsuki to change, help to change the narrative about what is happening in Tunisia as a necessary condition to engage in a constructive alliance with the international community to help the Tunisian people to bring democracy back to the country. Thank you so much. Well, Thank first you, of sir. all, I would like uh, to, uh, it's very, very important to remember that Tunisia is not an island. Uh, and Tunisia is submitted uh, also to the uh, uh, external factors. What's happening in Tunisia is, is not an isolated case. You have to remember that uh, um, Arab Spring has been, uh, um, I would say, has been killed everywhere by civil war in Egypt, by civil war in uh, in Libya, by civil war in uh, uh, in Syria, by civil war in uh, Yemen, by a coup, a military coup in Egypt, and now by this constitutional coup. So you have to link the the situation of Tunisia now to the situation of the, all the Arab uh, other ca countries. And here, we, the, the international level uh, uh, has to be uh, well explained. We are victims, I can say. We are victims not only of our own, you know, our, our weaknesses, or our, but also because the, the, uh, there is a real, uh, uh, I would say, decision at the 
national, uh, uh, regional level and maybe at the international level that the, that democracy is not for Arabs, that democracy is not for Tunisian. And this is why we have had to face alone, you know, this counter revolution everywhere. And this is why we have lost, for, uh, unfortunately, the, the battle against the constitution. You know that behind uh, uh, the liquidation of the of the Arab Spring, you have the Emirati regime, you have the Saudi regime, and maybe behind them you have also foreign powers. So the the, the, the narrative is not to say, hey, look, the poor Tunisian, they they were, uh, you know, they're trying you know, to set up a constitution, but now they have had a coup. The school, nobody knows where it comes from. No, the school, it comes from, you know, the the, the, the political decision uh, taken at the regional level, and the regional level are, are all clients of the uh, of the United States, the Emirates, and the Saudi and the and the Egyptian the regime. Us are uh, <laughs> uh, uh, clients of the United States, and here the the, the narrative is to go to the, the origin of the problem and to, to put the pressure on the, the, the U.S. government, as we, we are here in the United States, to say, look, you are uh, supporting this kind of regime. Destroying the revolution everywhere and destroying it at the, at the you know at the, the cradle of the Arab Spring to, to Tunisia, uh, and those people who are uh, you know uh, those states your client states now are working against you. Look what's happened with that position in the in the war of of Ukraine. They sided with Russia. They are uh, all this the, the, this regime is Emirati Saudi and Egyptian regime. You know they are uh, spreading. Uh, uh, false uh, hopes in the Arab world by saying, "Look, the, the best, in fact, the best model is the Chinese and the Russian model, and not the, uh, and not the democratic model." So, this is this is the most important thing I think here in the United States. You can space on saying you 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 are supporting you are supporting a regime that I, uh, are working against your uh, ideas and your interests everywhere. Thank you. Um, Last question, please. We have uh, about uh, seven more minutes, so we're yeah. going to take two questions, uh, inshallah, very quickly. The first one, which I think is very important, uh, from Wafa bin Hussein. Uh, she's a young Tunisian uh, lawyer uh, for human rights who uh, works here in Washington, D.C. And I think it's a very important question that needs to be addressed. So her question is, greetings. I am heartened to hear you speak about the psychological crisis in Tunisia. Do you think that due to that crisis, Tunisians are slowly missing the ability to dream, a critical component to building the Tunisia we want to see? What will it take to restore that, to restore the ability to dream? Well, it's a very, very important question. I, I thank, thank you for, thank you for, for this question because I always say that we, we miss it the most important. We always talk about the political crisis, economic crisis. Well, the deepest crisis is the crisis of, of the, uh, of the Tunisian cliche, if I may say. Tunisia are sad. Tunisian are, uh, are, uh, pessimistic. Uh, Tunisians do not believe in, uh, in anything, uh, they do not believe in any politician also. And this is very, very, uh, very upsetting for, uh, for me. I remember that in 2011, uh, everybody was dreaming of a new Tunisia. Everybody was uh, hopeful that we are going, you know, to be a, a new nation, a new people, a new state, etc., etc. Well, uh, the, the crime, I, th I am talking about crime, the crime of the counter revolution is that we uh, all this hope you know have uh, has vanished but i i do believe that we still have the possibility to dream and uh, uh, we have <laughs> and ma mainly the youth they have the possibility and they have the duty to, to, to dream of a new tunisia otherwise it will be really nightmare how do we restore that professor mazuki how do we give hope to the younger people younger generation uh, they have they have to fight you know we would, nobody would give you anything it's up to you know to to, to take to the street it's up to you know to the, the example it's up to some people like me you know to, to restore hope by talking that there is a way out etc cetera, etc cetera. it's our responsibility to all Tunisians to do, to do this Okay, and last question from uh, Mr. Ibrahim Bisharat. Um, he's actually also raising his hand, so I'm, I'm going to allow him to speak and he will ask his question directly. Go ahead, uh, uh, Ibrahim.
Ibrahim. Uh, yes, uh, good evening. Oh, good morning. Yeah. I am in Istanbul. Thank you for uh, uh, Dr. Adwan for this session and thank you for Dr. Masif Marzouki also for this session. Uh, actually, uh, my question is about, uh, from my readings uh, on literature review on the democratic transition in Tunisia as the successful example in the Arab world, that before the, before the revolution on Ibn Ali, there were about five years of talking between the seculars and Islamists. And they were agreeing that after the, on the day after uh, Ben Ali, and that was one of the underlying successes of the Tunisian revolution after Wales, that there was mm -hmm. an agreement, how, not like what happened in Egypt, fortunately. Now, what are the options and what are the possibilities that they work together on that? And also, at the same, at the same time, how to, to, you know, to repair the, the, the mistakes that has been that has been taking place on, on the, in the area's government, especially to, uh, to, to respond to the people's needs. Because, by the, by, because there's no option, I think, to also to, to, to come and to wait, but like what happened to Ben Ali, to wait 20 years in order to make, to make the change. And that's why I asked this question, how can they work together? Hmm. Uh, look, uh, in 2003, 2003, I organized a meeting a secret meeting between the different uh, political parties, Islamist, secularist, even communist, etc. And we had a discussion during three days and three nights in a remote village in France. And I can assure you that the, the, it's because of this uh, gathering that uh, the, the constitution was easy to draw and, because, and that we can have uh, the possibility of uh, this government between the Islamist party and the two secular, secularist party. So this was what I would call the miracle of the, 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 of, the of the Tunisian miracle because we we could reach we we reached at the at the moment a kind of consensus. Unfortunately, we we lost this consensus during the the period of the, the ten year the ten, ten last years. Now we have to restore this kind of uh, agreement, otherwise Tunisia would be lost. Uh, this is what I am saying to all my friends, uh, whether they are Islamists or they are not Islamists, reminding them that we are on the same boat, that this boat is sinking, and that, uh, nobody would save his life uh, uh, if we, we do not work together you know, to save the boat. I, I'm working for, the, for, for this once again, but uh, it's it's the, the, some people are uh, they are understanding what what I am saying. Others would you know would stick to their old uh, hatred, and uh, unfortunately, I cannot uh, do anything for them. So be sure that the discussion are going on, and that I still hope that we are we will reach uh, some agreement so we can offer a, a real alternative to the to to, to this. Uh, fake dictator or to this fake democrat. You know, we can't say is it something so strange for me that this man is uh, the president of Tunisia. For the moment, what I can assure you that we, we were fighting not only for restoring democracy, but also for restoring independence, because Tunisia is now under the scrutiny of, of regional power, not, not international power, but regional power, you know, they're scrutiny, and they are uh, uh, protecting this dictator.